This is Liao Zilan playing the Guzhang or Chinese harp. She's performed at the Royal Albert Hall and the Royal Festival Hall in London. She's toured internationally, collaborated with many famous musicians and recorded music for Hollywood film scores. She's become one of the leading musicians experimenting on the fusion between Chinese and Western music. But alongside music, there's another project that's very dear to Zilan's heart. Hi, I'm Jing Wong. I've been in Bogota since I was four years old and Bogota is an amazing place. I really enjoy it here and then you get to learn new stuff, new songs and then you get to learn what the Chinese instruments like and then how to play it. Liverpool has one of the oldest and one of the largest Chinese communities in Europe. The Pagoda Arts Centre was established there in 1982. It acts as a focal point for the community and is home to the Chinese Youth Orchestra, a unique ensemble of young British Chinese musicians. Welcome to Bridge Builders, where we meet people whose lives have increased understanding between China and the UK. Today we hear the extraordinary story of Liao Zilan, whose tireless work sharing her Chinese culture with her adopted home of Liverpool and the UK has been an inspiration both locally and internationally. But for Zilan, it's a continuation of her lifelong passion for music. I learned to play the guzheng at a very, very young age. I remember riding bicycle to my teachers for lessons. And I remember that we love Chinese New Year because there's a lot of food, a lot of um, lucky money uh, going around. And I do remember playing music and performing and going competitions. I was born in Guangzhou and we live in an area called Samin. It's like a little island of middle of Guangzhou city. And um, I remember going to the school that I'm doing Chinese music. I'm not good with studying, but I always got special treatment because I got to play instrument and the teacher think I'm good on that. All my life, I just want to play music and I just want to learn the guzheng with my teacher. In the late 1970s, Zilan's father, Liao Guishan, himself an established musician and performer, came to the UK to visit family living in London. During his stay, he spotted a job opportunity that would change the direction of his and Zilan's lives. Liverpool City Council in the 70s, I think they start opening up to more cultural inclusion and the central government funded the money to build this pagoda center for the Chinese community in Liverpool, close to Chinatown. The job is to do promoting Chinese culture, a uh, cultural officer. He applied for the job and in the audition and he got the job. In taking the position of cultural officer at the newly established Pagoda Arts Centre, Zilan's father was allowed to bring his family over to live with him. But not until Zilan had finished important business back in China. And I remember at that time of just going through the got silver prize for playing the guzheng in the competition, but we have to leave China. The city of Liverpool developed around its huge shipping port from the 18th century. The first migrants from China arrived in the 1860s, along with a booming trade in products such as silk, cotton and tea. Built in the 1800s, the Three Graces on the Bund in Shanghai, China are modelled on the Liverpool waterfront with its world-famous liver building. Today, it's estimated around 10,000 Chinese residents live in Liverpool and the surrounding area. In 1983, an excited 13-year-old Zilan made her long journey to this strange new world. When we get to Heathrow, my father met us 
and then we took a train to Liverpool and then it's another long journey. It was a really different experience because I've never been out of Guangzhou all my life and seeing the journey on the train is a lot and lot of green, a lot and lot of trees and to me I thought that is the forest. This was the first of many cultural differences young Zilan faced as she started her new life in Liverpool. I come from Guangzhou and Guangzhou is very, very hot and even at that time it's still very warm, it's the springtime. So we find England's very cold and always rain. The language is a big shock to me and I would do music, like I said, I play music since I was three. So I really good with music. I thought I was very good with music. But I remember when I went to the comprehensive school for the first lessons, I understood nothing. Everything the teacher said, I just couldn't understand what he said. And I think I cried for the first few weeks that I just like, just think I'm hopeless and useless. But my father encouraged me to learn the Western notation. He helped me and taught me. And then I went to study the big harp, and um, I studied flute for my dad as well. At the Pagoda Centre, Zilan's father helped establish the Chinese Youth Orchestra. It gave children from Liverpool's Chinese community an opportunity to come together and participate in their shared heritage. It also provided Zilan with the next step for her musical ambitions. Through Pagoda, I met the director of Merseyside Youth music orchestra, Mr. Mulholland. He heard me playing the guzheng and then he highly recommended me to apply for Cheatham School of Music in Manchester. Again, my English was the most problem that I had at the time. And I think I'm the first Chinese student there. Cheatham's have been extremely helpful and they tried to put me to every single English class that I can go into. They did ask me to become a boarder because it's a private school and they got um, boarding schools there as well. They think if I actually live there, then my language will pick up quicker. But my father didn't want me to do that because he worried that I would learn to bad habit like having boyfriends. <laughs> uh, but mainly is that he want me to continue with the Chinese music practice and at the weekend he can help me. So we, I travel every day from Liverpool to Manchester for three years on the train. After completing Cheatham College, Zilan applied to the prestigious Royal Academy of Music in London. But this time, music wasn't the only thing on her mind. It's probably teenagers' rebellion, just want to go away as far as your parents, so I applied to all the music college in London, but not Northern. I just deliberately not to apply it. And I got into the uh, Academy of Music, uh, continued to learn to play the big harp. But at that time, we are a new immigrant and I, we couldn't afford to buy a big harp. At that time, it's the same price of a house, so we couldn't afford it. And uh, Mr. Mulholland, when he found out that I got into the academy and he's very, very proud that I, with three years learning the big harp, I actually good enough to get in. So he started raising money. After graduating from the academy, Zilan was keen to pursue a career in music. However, her father had other ideas. I decided to continue as a musician because my harp teacher, she was like almost like a role model to me, that she continued to actually have children and she freelance and she teach and all that. So I thought it could make a living on that. And when I told my dad that I want to be a freelance Chinese musician, and he just said, no, you're not, because you won't be able to make money. You won't be able to uh, live playing the Chinese harp. Uh, he wants me to be a librarian <laughs> in Liverpool uh, because there's a post for looking for Chinese librarian in Toxted Library. I just go, no, I'm not be a librarian because it's not me. 
I joined the Live Music Now at that time, which is a scheme helping young musicians to become freelance. And we do do a lot of work in the community, uh, performing in the care homes, as well as festivals. And that really keep me going. And also I do, because I play the Western harp as well as the Chinese harp on the Gujan. Chinese New Year is always the busiest time. And then for the Western harp, Christmas time is always the busiest time. But after Christmas during the year, the quietest time is January and February. And that fit in very well with me because Chinese New Year is always January, February. The freelance work on small gigs and festivals paved the way to performing on bigger stages. When I do the Guzhen, I approached Walmart and they took me in as the Chinese Guzhen player as well as workshop person to do Chinese dance workshops. And through that, I met Peter Gabriel. So people always talk about Peter Gabriel and um, I think I did a tour in America. Cannot remember the years, 98, 92, something like that. And he was on the tour. And in the evening there, he would do some performance at the end. And some of the nights he will invite all the world music singers and the dancers to perform with him at the end. And I remember doing one in, I think either Chicago or San Francisco, I cannot remember. And I was dance with uh, John. John is John Wardle, better known as the musician and songwriter Jar Wobble. So we kind of got to know each other around that time. And I got her to come and play support, didn't I, yeah. uh, as well? Because I'm the partner of that, I wanted to see her, really. But I thought, and I liked her. Um, I thought, because I've been, actually, I think we liked each other, quite, yeah. didn't we? I mean, we just sort of liked each other and got along. Zilan and John became close while touring together with WOMAD. For me, I will go out with a non-Chinese person because I do music. A lot of Chinese families do not understand about music. They will just think you should be accountants, solicitors and all that, but musicians, they not quite understand it. I think it is natural with, um, with you, isn't it? It is more... Yeah. I don't know. I just think it's more fun because he was a fun guy and he always made jokes and he always laughed in the band uh, when we were on tours. The couple were married in 1997 and set up home in London. As their family grew to include two children, they realised London living couldn't offer everything that they wanted. John's the one say, go back to the north because it's near my parents and it's the youth orchestra there. Grandparents are important to kids anyway, and the boys know where they come from. There's some feeling of continuity, psychologically, that's important. Liao Zilan plays the Gu Zhang, a traditional Chinese instrument dating back over 2,000 years in origin. The uh, concept of Chinese culture, with music, I always say that in my performance, is the Hollywood Chinese music. Da, 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 and then that's Chinese. And I think people have a lot more understanding of Chinese music now. So when I do my performance, I will explain about the history, how it come uh, throughout thousands of years, and then how it developed. In the ancient days, it had 13 silk strings, but now it increased to 21 strings. In the old days, players would normally sit on the floor, and that end would be rest on the floor, and this end, the instrument will rest on the lap. As well as performing on tour with WOMAD in the 1990s, Zilan has collaborated with other world music artists on various projects. She also recorded the music for the Oscar-winning film, The Last Emperor. Husband and wife John and Zilan have also collaborated together on multiple projects. Their unique fusion of sounds from East and West resulted in the album Chinese Dub, which went on to win the Songlines Award for Best Cross-Cultural Collaboration in 2009. But its creation had somewhat unorthodox origins. 
our Chinese dub happened, she would come back with the boys and they'd be playing so then I'd start playing it and changing the arrangement so I would go and that's the right arrangement and they'd really get the ump so she said you want to do a recording with the I said well then whatever so we just did the recording and then it turned into doing a tour and a show and it became a big project where you merge the Chinese melodies with like a dub feel, you know. Yeah, it's happened in the uh, capital culture of Europe in Liverpool and they're commissioning different cross-culture work and all that so we apply for it and they like it because Chinese is the oldest community in Europe. With such musical parents, it was no surprise that their children developed an early interest in playing instruments. When they're doing like a celebration of the youth orchestra, and I took the boys to watch it. And that's when John said, I want to go and study drumming with Gong Gong. Gong Gong means granddad in Cantonese. But um, yeah, they really into the Chinese music and Charlie's very natural to play the who the girl who my dad thought they would just go there like typical Western children that after two or three months the the interest would go and then they didn't want to go again but they kept it on in there they kept yeah, it for yeah, about did, 10 yeah. years in 2013 Zilan took over as the lead of the Chinese Youth Orchestra at the Pagoda Arts Centre in Liverpool when her children started taking part it was the third generation of her family to do so Watch me when you come here, okay? Three, go. The youth orchestra that's set up by my father is the first um, Chinese youth orchestra of its kind in Europe. We are very concentrating on um, Cantonese music with our youth orchestra as well. My dad was already quite established before he came to England and he's the, <clears throat> he's the flautist and he um, writes music and one of his pieces was actually won the at the time in 70 something 79 <clears throat> and it's one of the example of new Cantonese music style and it's still, at the moment, it's still widely used. In 2009, the economic crash in the UK resulted in a huge cut in arts funding for organisations across the country. The Pagoda Arts Centre in Liverpool was one of those affected. Ten full-time members of staff were made redundant, among them Zilan's mother. But my mother didn't take the redundancy package because she said, that package is not that much money, but I want to keep the job. I want to keep the orchestra going so the children got somewhere to continue. I mean, some of the counsellors are still very supportive and they actually allow us to stay in the centre, even though we lost all the staff, all the funding. But we still got the Art Council continue funding us. Um, so the main funding for us is the Art Council. Without that, we won't be able to continue. To enable us to stay in the centre, we volunteer to deal with all the social side, like interpreting people's letters and surgeries and all this and all the activity in the centre. In addition to hosting the Chinese Youth Orchestra, the centre has always played an important role for the Chinese community in Liverpool. It's our 40 years celebration this year, uh, 2nd of April. That's when it was opened by Prince Charles and his wife then, uh, Princess Diana. And it's been very, very widely, uh, strongly used by the community, not only the music culture side, but the social side. I think we have at least 300 people a week using the centre, doing English classes, all this thing. And now, before the lockdown, I think we have probably 500 people using the centre weekly. And then we have um, festivals and public performances and all that. And to be very proud to say that after 10 years of Pagoda Art, I think we reached a million. 
participants and audiences online as well as in person. So we're quite proud of that. Hello, my name is Jason. I've been in Pagoda since I was six years old and I came here because my mum made me and also I wanted to learn a new instrument. Hello, my name is Emily. I've been to Pagoda since I was five. This is important to me because you learn new skills and you find new mates. The Pagoda Centre also depends on the work of volunteers like Casey, a young British Chinese local who works at the centre as a community champion doing administration work, interpreting and translating with the local Chinese community. This community centre is really important to the Chinese community because English isn't really the first language for the community and um, I feel like they need somewhere to rely on and somewhere that they can trust and the Pagoda have been around for such a long time um, and they they know about us so just like I've known the centre for my whole life and I know that I can always reach out to them if I need help for anything and I feel like a lot of people in the community have that same trust and they want to rely on us for different services which is why we're here and what we're here for. The Pagoda Arts Centre is considered a vital place for building bridges between the Chinese community and the local Liverpudlians. My name is Suzanne Jones. I'm the English teacher here in the Pagoda. I've been teaching here for about five years and uh, I love it. The student numbers have increased, which shows how much the students love coming here. They want to learn English, they like learning English, but they also like to use it as a centre for meeting their friends. The Pagoda Centre has helped the Chinese community live, work and prosper in the UK. But it's also been a hub for British people to learn about China through participation in Chinese cultural events. For retired locals like Val and Ray, the centre's become like a second home. My name's Ray. Uh, I'm part of the uh, culture and the furniture at Pagoda Arts. We're actively involved in keeping the centre going and getting involved in anything that's going on in the centre. So my name's Val. I'm a volunteer at the centre. I came here about 15 years ago to learn how to do Tai Chi and ended up never leaving um, because they really do draw you in. And we've done lots of different things with the centre. The centre is very diverse in its attitude to people and to the projects that we take part in. So we've done lots of art projects um, where we've, um, we've gone out into the city to display and we go into schools and we teach them about Chinese culture and Chinese history and things like that. And we have also learned an awful lot ourselves. Some people are maybe a little bit fearful of Chinese culture because they don't understand it, but it's very, very welcoming. And it helps us to understand everybody. In 2020, as the COVID pandemic began to spread, the Pagoda Arts Centre adopted another role as it became a refuge for the community in the face of unexpected hostility. 2020, when the pandemic just started, the hate crime toward Chinese is immense. Like, I work in the orchestra, and at that time we have about 40 kids. Majority of them are British-born Chinese. They are Scousers. Some of them don't even speak Chinese. None of them went back to China. And at the time, in end of February, March, one of the kids come back and said to me that they been sort of like calling names and all this. And I said like, okay, how many of you recently been targeted? Every single child put their hands up. And one of the girls, 14, 15 years old, and she said she was in the, in the bus and people told her to get off and spat at her. She was that young, she didn't know what to do. She just got off the bus, but didn't know what to do. And when I heard that, I tried to um, trying to laugh it off because you don't want to cry in front of the kids. But my heart sank. Every single child from the, as young as five years old. And one of the boys said to John, <laughs> Leo said to him, what is Chinese virus? I don't want to die. I'm not a virus. And he couldn't understand because people call him a virus. And he just thought, I'm going to die. 
we have all this problem, but loads of people trying to help, lots of people cry out for it, and we have loads of support in Liverpool with all the other art organisations like KU and all that, so, and the police trying to really help out. And that's why we done this song, Isolate, um, in October, after the lockdown, before the second lockdown. Um, just let those young people to express what it was about for them. Wake up, feel pressure. Little bro about to get pressured. Yeah. Jason looking all booky. Put him on the front page. Face all flattered. Popping all night, that's madness. But I know he's not smattered. This dry cough ain't coronavirus. The authority to try to help when they learned about it, but then again with the Chinese a lot of times, it's our culture, we just get on with it and a lot of times don't make trouble. Uh, and also it's like, oh, it just happened, we just let it go. Zilan feels fortunate that she and her family have been able to settle in a city which is home to so many cultures mixing together. When you live together, everybody mix up with mix with each other and I think Liverpool is a very good example that the Chinese lived there for hundreds of years and there's so many mixed marriage and so we got the Irish uh, Chinese mixed and a few years ago when we do another uh, project and one lady came up we came to the uh, talk and she's Chinese Jamaican Irish mixed and we just sort of like wow it is like it's completely into one community. There's no Chinese, not everybody treats us the same. Local volunteer Ray believes building a bridge with others is in the DNA of Liverpudlians. How do I think we can understand each other better between nations and culture? I think it's more just one word. It's love. If you love and you understand what love is, then it breaks down an awful lot of barriers. It's like smiling at somebody. If you smile at somebody, you're showing love. And it, it's that interaction that I think can break down a lot of barriers between cultures. Despite the continuing threat to funding, the Pagoda Arts Centre and the Chinese Youth Orchestra remain and have thrived. I think we have at least 300 people a week using the centre, doing English classes, all this thing. And now, before the lockdown, I think we have probably 500 people using the centre weekly. And then we have um, festivals and public performances and all that. And to be very proud to say that uh, after 10 years of Pagoda Art, I think we reached a million participants and audiences online as well as in person. So we're quite proud of that. The Chinese Youth Orchestra has performed across the UK and abroad, increasing understanding of Chinese culture and creating memories Zilan and her family will cherish forever. I think the high time for us is definitely the Shanghai Export, that we, the orchestra was invited to go back to China uh, to perform, representing Liverpool. The young orchestra member was representing the youth of Liverpool and we performed with the Philharmonic uh, orchestra in Shanghai Export and I remember my father he's still alive then and he said my if he said once my lifetime I have done what I really wanted it like performing with a big orchestra in Shanghai lot of people lot of the, uh, it's just like really showing the music really glue people together and he said this lifetime if I don't get it again next lifetime I appreciate it. He liked that. He really enjoyed that. The Pagoda Arts Centre has recently secured another three years funding for its Chinese youth orchestra from the Arts Council, giving British Chinese children a unique opportunity to handle traditional Chinese instruments and to cross the bridge back to their cultural origins. To actually see young people playing Chinese music live and see in person is something new to them. All we can imagine is seeing this instrument on the television box, but not able to have a hand on it and all that. So they really think it's amazing that Liverpool children can, if they want, they can come and learn it. 
You've been listening to Bridge Builders with me, Louise Greenwood. The producer and sound editor is Terry Wilson. The series producer is Elizabeth Means, and the series editor is Guo Chun. Mm-hmm.